Did you bring to me sacrifices and offerings during the forty years in the wilderness, O house of Israel? Uh, you shall take up uh, Sekuth, your king, and Kion, your star god, your images that you made for yourselves. And I'll go on to 27. And I will send you into exile beyond Damascus, says the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. Yeah, now, now the critics, and always remember, the critics are the Pelagians, the Socinians, the modernists. Uh, Voss notes that they take this to be a reference to the fact that sacrifices were not offered during God's favor shown to Israel in the wilderness. And by favor, they mean uh, that, that God watched over them in the pillar of fire by night and the pillar of cloud by day and was with his people, gave them manna, provided for them. Their sandals didn't wear out, etc. Uh, Voss says, though, that there, there's not a careful reading of the text if you interpret it that way. Um, Voss says Amos' true sense is this, on page 267, to paraphrase this text, do you, now Israel, endeavor in the wilderness, after being rejected by me, to propitiate me by sacrifice and offer and offerings? The point is this, that, that this text is being used to say something along these lines. That once God's favor is withdrawn from his covenant people due to sustained, willful apostasy, high-handed sin, once that favor has been withdrawn, it is never going to avail to offer a sacrifice with a heart that continues to be hard against God. Um, if you refuse to repent and yet rely on the outward offering of sacrifice, if you rely on the cult to secure forgiveness once the divine favor has been lost due to protracted sin, you are most certainly going to be sent into exile. I don't know how to illustrate this, Camden. I'll, I'll try. It's as though one hand is offering a sacrifice to the Lord, and in the other hand, behind the back, are idols. And the hand behind the back is holding what the heart truly loves. If you look at verses 26 and 27, your images that you made for yourself, your star god, you are holding ultimate religious affection in your heart to those idols while you seek to propitiate me with sacrifice. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is saying that that is fundamentally abhorrent in my sight. It is a mockery of the sacrificial system. Why? Well, here's the key. And this is an old Vossian theme. This is the theme that we've been seeing so long here. Atonement exists as a means to an end. And what is that end? It is religious fellowship with God that expresses itself in worship, in trust, and in obedience. And so the point could not be clearer here, that if you continue to sin in a high-handed way, you hold your idols in one hand while offering a sacrifice with the other, with your heart being devoted to those idols instead of me. The point is that you are doing precisely what the wicked generation in the wilderness did. You're honoring me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. And and so that that's a, 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 a critical point that Voss is trying to say here, that this is not a proof text for the fact that God doesn't delight in sacrifices and offerings offered according to the law. It's not a proof text to say that there were never such sacrifices ordained by God. It's simply saying that you cannot serve two gods.